Hi, I'm Casey with Bluegrass Otaku, and we're hosting Lexington, Kentucky's first anime convention in Tokyo Comic September. And I'm here with Greg Ayers. And uh, for those who don't know, Greg, what, what are you known for in the anime and con going community? Uh, well, uh, for a lot in the con going community, uh, well, I'm a voice actor. That's what I do by profession. Uh, I'm also a professional DJ. Which is why you're hearing us in the in the backstage area of a nerdcore concert right now. Uh, for this convention, I also book all of the musical acts and am responsible for the two huge parties that are not raves, but they look like them. <laughs> we can't call them that. Uh, but I've been working in the industry for uh, about 12 years, and uh, I I would go to a lot of conventions and. I would see things that go wrong, and you can't really complain about something that's wrong if you're not willing to help fix. So I ended up on staff, and now I staff three conventions a year, uh, soon to be four, I think. Uh, so it's a lot of work, but so I'm known for a little bit of everything in this in this area. Uh, as far as roles are concerned, I guess my newest, biggest role will be content, Dead Man Wonderland, that was on Toonami this year. Uh, super, super cool, super edgy show, so... Awesome. Now, um, going back to the voice acting, uh, what was your first role, and, and what would you suggest to people who are um, aspiring to be voice actors? Well, the first role was a little tiny part in a show called Seal Angel Kurumi, which is not not kid-friendly at all. Uh, it's very boo-boo-rific, uh, but uh, it was a very small role. Most of us start out in small roles, and then they see how we react to the microphone, they see how things go. Uh, and then later I would share a role. They said, well, you're going to share a role with Claudia Black from Farscape. And I was like, the really hot Australian girl? How, how am I sharing a role <laughs> with, a, a, with a woman? And then we do this, there's a transformation that takes place when my really creepy uh, femi boy kisses this other character. He turns into this giant female robot. And the female <laughs> robot is uh, Claudia Black. So, um... Uh, Advice for people that want to be voice actors, it's tough. Uh, this is a really tough time in the industry and there's not a lot of work. Uh, I tell everybody to act and try to get as much acting experience as possible and do that. Um, but more importantly right now, because there are so many actors that aren't working a lot right now, there's a lot of people trying to uh, like cash in on the fact that kids want to be voice actors. So there's so lots of people selling little books and classes here and workshops there and now like some of those are very very thought well thought out uh, workshops Richard Horvitz has a great workshop acting workshop that he does uh, but he doesn't guarantee someone a place in the industry and, and I tell kids I'm like look take Richard's take Richard's class but take it not because you think it's going to give you a part in the industry you should want to hear what Richard Horvitz has to say about acting and his method and how he does things and Richard does it for all the right reasons. There's some people out there that are not so unscrupulous and uh, are really just taking kids for a ride. So I usually tell people to go take classes from somebody whose job it is to teach acting and go from there. Um, and then just act any chance you get, whether it's school, play, or community theater, or you know professional gigs that you know you found through auditions. Act and act and act and be nice to the people you work with because. 90% of us that work in the anime industry got this way from a referral. Like, somebody was like, oh, I've got a friend that sounds like that. And, and that's definitely how I, how I got my first role. Uh, my first audition was actually my voicemail at my day job. Uh, and they were looking for somebody that sounded like a kid. And my, I was doing IT work at a law firm. And they were like, oh, my God, call our friend. He sounds like a little kid. He's like in his 30s. He sounds like he's 12. Just call his voicemail. Call his voicemail after 8. He won't be there after 8. And so that's what they literally did. They just called my voicemail. But, and that's why it's important to be nice to the people you work with because they're the pe you know those people that you work with are the ones that'll be like, oh hey, I've worked with this person and they're really good. Or, or like if you're bad and a con goes, hey Greg, we're thinking about having this guest. I'm like, oh, you don't want to have him. So, it's it's important to be nice to people just in general to work and network. And uh, I would say to follow your dreams. Your dreams. You have to be realistic. I, I know kids are like, well, I'm moving to Texas and I'm going to work for Funimation. Well, that's not a realistic following your dreams. But if you're willing to like study acting and yada yada and follow, I tell people, your, your dream, the, the thing that you think is your dream now might not be where you end up in life, but following your dreams usually plants you where you, you're supposed to be. So like, you may think you want to be a voice actor, but you find out you have great comedic timing, you're a great comedian or a great singer or something like that. 
you don't know those things until you start going after what you want. So I tell people not to give up hope, you know, uh, there's not a lot of work right now, but that doesn't mean there won't be more later. Uh, just do all the prep work now. The, the learning is the fun part. Once you do it, once you get to the job part, it's the job. But learning and taking classes and doing workshops, that's all fun. Awesome. Now, um, what is your favorite thing about conventions and what can you uh, tell new newbies how to prepare for a convention? Well, it, it will depend on the size of the convention. Big conventions offer some things that little conventions can't. Uh, big conventions like Otacon, and, and I guess OhioCon is a big convention now, uh, offer monstrous dealer's rooms and sometimes really cool Japanese bands and uh, you know actors and artists and whatnot. And, a lot of programming, whereas smaller cons offer a totally different experience. Uh, maybe not as many guests, probably not a band, uh, but it's a more intimate experience and it's a chance to get to work with or get to know other people in your area that are of a like mind. And like, I use the word nerd in the most loving fashion, but they're like nerd gatherings. And, and what better what better way to make new friends than to go somewhere where you have a lot in common with people. So uh, the, I would say the small cons are really where you go to hang out and meet people and make friends. Big cons, I take the new friends with me and you go out and explore together because there are things that you can find at the big shows that uh, you know you probably can't. The vendors rooms are monstrous usually at big shows. And the thing that I love the most about conventions is it is a safe haven for a lot of people, including me, uh, including a lot of other people. Uh, the outside world is not always nicest to smart kids or kids that read or kids that draw or kids that have pink hair or whatever. And this is the place where that doesn't matter. This is a place where we can all just kind of hang out and be one. And uh, it's really neat. There have been some times recently where some kind of nasty bully type stuff has happened and I always try to fight that as hard as I can because I think that's what makes this environment unique. It's just a place where uh, you know, some kid that some kid that is like picked on and like fat and, you know, pimply and everybody in his school is like horrible to him and like he really just hates waking up in the morning. But on Saturday in May at a certain hotel, he's gonna put on a costume and he's like the brave warrior Kenshin and like that doesn't matter. Like all those mean things that people say and all the things that he worries about his image don't matter because he's, you know, this great samurai warrior. Uh, and like kids that have a hard time uh, talking to, you know, meeting girls and stuff like that. There's so many people that have met at anime conventions. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot. This is like our own little, you know, uh, what do they call those things? Um, Oh, uh, <laughs> no, no, there's, there's little things that you grow a life form inside of them, like a bio, I say biodome, but I think that's the wrong name for it, but like, this is its own little universe with its own, like, you know, uh, way of meeting people and taking care of each other and nurturing and, and it's, it's just a really neat place. Uh, uh, I definitely go to get away from, I live in Texas, <laughs> a very conservative, conservative state, so when I come to a convention, it's a breath of fresh air, because nobody at a convention looks at me oh, weird because I have pink hair, because I'm standing next to five other people that have pink hair, but uh, it's, I think that's my favorite thing about it, is, are the people, the community and the family that, that we have here, so... Awesome. Well, I think that's all we have time for. Yeah, I hear Whitey Cracker screaming in the microphone, too, so it's almost time to get in there and make sure his show goes off. Well, thank, thank you so much, much for coming out. Like, thank you, guys. Sorry it took so long to track me down. Uh, I stay real busy at this show, so I'm glad we got a chance to find a little bit of a quiet room. <laughs>